Hi, today we're going to talk about energy transfer between one system and a second system or one object and a second object. Energy transfer occurs in two ways, either by heat or by work. Today we're only going to talk about heat. Now heat is the transfer of energy from a hot object to a cold object and this occurs naturally or spontaneously. There are three ways by which heat occurs. The first one is conduction. Conduction is energy transfer due to physical contact between the two objects or the two systems. Here I've outlined two situations. In the first situation, I have two blocks of the same size. The first block is at a higher temperature, TH. The second block is at a lower temperature, TL. And nothing is connecting the two objects. No physical barrier, no physical connection occurs here. In situation two, however, I have the same two blocks at the same two temperatures and a, uh, in, and a solid bridge connecting the two blocks. Okay? In this situation, conduction will occur because of this metal bridge. And energy will be transferred, energy flow will occur in this direction. And in this situation, there is no physical uh, bridge that connects the two situations. Yes, there are air molecules uh, flying around in this uh, space here, but there is no solid physical thing that's connecting the two systems. And therefore, conduction will not occur. A visible example of conduction is when a person takes a pencil or a pen or a marker in their hand, holds it tightly for 30 seconds to a minute, lets it go, and notices that the temperature rises in the marker or the pencil. And this occurs because there's an energy transfer or flow of energy from my body, from my hand, from my palm into this marker, thereby raising the temperature of this marker. That is conduction. And it only occurs if there's physical contact. So, when people talk about conduction, they usually talk about energy flow or the rate of energy flow within the system. When the, in this situation outlined here, I have a hot system, a cold system, the physical contact, the bridge that's connecting the two systems, okay? And energy flow will occur, will travel from here to here within this bridge. And the rate of that flow can be given by this equation here, okay? So Q over T, where T is the time it takes for it to travel this distance. Q is the uh, flow of heat or flow of energy equals K times A over L times the change in temperature. Okay? And K here is simply a constant called the thermal conductivity constant that depends on the uh, object or the system used. And it differs from one object to the second object. It basically depends on the composition of the object. It also depends slightly on the temperature of the object being used. Okay? L here is the distance. The distance from this object to the second object. Therefore, the entire bridge distance L would be plugged in here. Okay? Now, the area isn't the area of this. It isn't the area of this. It's the area of the bridge that's connecting. It's the area of the face side. The face side is this side. If you take this out, this is the area we want, okay? And this is the length that we're talking about here. Now the difference in temperature is simply this temperature minus this temperature. When you plug the things in, you get the rate of heat flow, okay? And this will become important only when you're dealing with conduction and nothing else. This formula only applies for conduction. The second way by which energy is transferred due to heat is called convection. Convection is the transfer of energy due to the movement of fluids. And fluids can both include gas and liquid. Okay? And convection absolutely requires the presence of molecules or atoms within the medium. There is no longer a need for a physical presence or a physical bridge connecting two objects or two systems, but there is a need for that, those molecules, okay? And here we have a common example used to describe or, or convey convection, okay? 
here we have a cup of coffee, okay? You know that if you leave a cup of coffee at room temperature, eventually it will cool down. And that's because energy transferred from the cup of coffee to the air, okay? What actually happens on a microscopic level is that the atoms, for example, diatomic oxygen, hit the surface of the water, okay? When they hit the surface of the water, they bounce back with a higher kinetic energy. Okay, so the oxygen gained kinetic energy while this lost kinetic energy. So it lost the heat, it lost energy because of conservation of energy. Okay, eventually enough of these atoms will attack or hit the surface of the water that it will lose most of its energy and this will cool it down. Okay, and that's why. Convection can only occur in the presence of molecules, okay? And conduction requires physical contact, okay? The third and final type of energy transfer that occurs due to heat is called radiation. Radiation is the energy transfer that occurs due to the presence of electromagnetic waves. Okay, these electromagnetic waves can include UV waves, radio waves, microwaves, and infrared waves, and other waves as well. So all objects on Earth and in space radiate heat or radiate energy. And that's because every single object has some temperature. And zero Kelvin, the absolute zero temperature, is unattainable. So, so all objects vibrate or move to a certain extent. And therefore, all objects at all times radiate energy. Okay? One cool thing about radiation, unlike convection or conduction, is that radiation can occur in the absence of molecules or in the absence of a physical barrier. And this is seen in space when light travels from the sun, the hot object, to the earth, the cooler object, the waves travel in a vacuum in the absence of molecules. And that's because waves, electromagnetic waves, are actually energy bundles that carry themselves from a hot object to a cool object. Okay? And it is radiation that heats the Earth. When we spoke earlier about conduction, we also mentioned rate of energy transfer. Here we can also talk about a similar concept, rate of energy transfer, but the formula here is different. The formula here is power, which is actually change in energy over time, which is the rate flow, is equal to sigma, which is a constant and will be given to you, emissivity value A and T. T is the temperature of the object, A is the area of the face that's radiating the heat, and this is a value between 0 and 1. Now when this value is 1, that simply means that the object is absorbing all the heat, is absorbing all the radiation, which means that it also releases all the radiation. Okay. Now a black body object is an object that has this value that equals 1. Now technically such an object does not exist. And that's because if such an object did exist, it would not reflect any of the waves it, and would not reflect light waves. And so we would not be able to see it. It would be invisible to us. So technically, it does not exist because every single object, to some degree, is visible to us. Okay? And a value of zero simply means that it, do, it reflects all the radiation. It doesn't absorb any radiation. So it doesn't release any radiation, okay?